In January 2019, I didn't know how to code. Just one year later, I got an internship offer from Amazon. Here's how I cracked the Amazon interview process in the same year I learned how to code. So what's on the agenda for today is first a little bit of background and context about me. Then I'm gonna talk about the application timeline as well as the recruiting process. Next, I'm gonna talk about getting the offer and then three tips to help you guys on your way to crack Amazon as well. So first, a little bit of background about me. I just finished my junior year of college at Carnegie Mellon University studying information information systems. This is also my second summer interning for Amazon. So I originally got my internship offer at Amazon before my sophomore year finished. So now let's talk about the application timeline for tech recruiting. In general, tech recruiting starts anywhere from mid to late summer all the way into fall and ends somewhere even early fall all the way up until February or March or April. But the way it typically goes is you apply around August or September and you finish somewhere around Thanksgiving. So for Amazon specifically, their software engineering application application for internships opens very early, somewhere in July. And these interview processes are conducted on a rolling basis. So I think it's pretty important to apply early. With that being said, I did not follow that. And I ended up applying somewhere around late September. I was lucky and fortunate enough to be referred by one of my friend's brothers who works at Amazon. So I sent him my resume. He put in my information and my resume into the system. And I waited until I got an email from Amazon that I'd been referred to apply. So a few weeks later, either in October or November, I got an email saying that my application was incomplete. I was pretty confused because I thought I filled out all of my info the first time, but I figured maybe something just went wrong on their end. So I filled out all of my information again and I completed it. Or so I thought because I received another one of those emails in December saying that my application was still incomplete. At this point, I was a bit annoyed, but I filled out my information again and sent in my application. And thankfully this time it went through. At this point, my application actually was submitted and I was just waiting until I heard back from Amazon to start the process or I just get ghosted. But I didn't get ghosted as you can probably tell and I received an email invitation to start the process soon after. So before I get into my interview experience with Amazon, let's talk about what tech recruiting is like in general. Usually the way that these processes go after you apply is that if you get past the resume screen, you'll be sent an online assessment or an OA, which is something you take by yourself. You get like a 30 to 90 minute time limit to solve one to multiple different leak code type questions. It's pretty much just like how you practice it, except there's a little bit more pressure because this is the real deal. If you pass the online assessment, the next step is the phone interview, which is similar to the online assessment. You're still coding in front of your computer, except this time there's an interviewer examining your code as you go along. In this step, there is also the difference that you have to explain your code as you're writing it. These interviews are primarily technical, but there are the occasional behavioral questions that are kind of thrown at you, maybe just asking about your workplace decision-making. And once you get past the phone interview, the next and final stage is generally the on-site interview. Before the coronavirus pandemic, lots of companies spent time and money flying out their potential candidates to interview them. But since then, interviewing has done primarily just online. So on-sites are pretty similar to the phone interview. They're conducted remotely, except sometimes you'll have back-to-back -back interviews for your on-site. And once you pass all of your interviews or just do well enough on average to get a passing grade, then congrats, you've got your offer. So now let's talk about Amazon's process and my experience with it. So Amazon's process is fairly standard. There are a couple of online assessments and typically just one phone interview standing between you and that offer letter. But Amazon's process is different in that there are multiple online assessments and they're all different. The first of the three online assessments that I had was about debugging code. I'd never seen any online assessment like this or heard of anything like it. And I didn't really prepare as much as I should have. So I pretty much completely bombed this one. Got half of the questions right in the amount of time that was given. By the time I received the email for the second online assessment, I just assumed that everyone got the email for the second online assessment and I was just gonna get rejected the second someone actually took a look at my scores. But regardless, I still tried to keep at it and the second assessment was a standard coding assessment like the lead code style questions and I was able to solve both questions with decent time and space complexity. The third and final online assessment is also pretty unique in that it's kind of like a behavior online assessment, basically just asking about how you would perform in workplace settings. And something that I'd like to add about this is that Amazon has these leadership principles and there are 16 of them. Each one represents a core value of the company. There are occasionally being more added to the list as Amazon continues to grow and expand and their priorities change and shift a little bit. Now, of course, every company cares about the personalities of its employees. After all, you don't wanna be working with someone who doesn't work well in a team, even if they're great at coding. But Amazon is 
the only company that I know of that has such an extensive list of the character traits that they want their employees to have. Because of this, I think it's pretty important to get an understanding of how your own qualities as a person fits into the leadership principles at Amazon. And I also think that it's important to have these personal experience stories ready to call upon when you're asked behavioral questions in these interviews. So after I completed my online assessments, it was just a couple days before Christmas. So I was kind of playing the waiting game to see if I got a response back or if I'd even get one at all. But luckily enough, a couple days later, I received an email to schedule my final interview and I tried to pick the earliest date possible, but it was still a couple weeks into January. And I was really worried that I get placed on the waiting list because typically somewhere around January, February or March, people stop getting offers and they start getting placed on the wait list, which basically just means that they interviewed a lot of quality candidates, but they only have a certain amount of spots. So if people drop out or don't accept their offers, then you'll get an offer if you're on the waiting list. The interview itself was standard. It was just a couple of behavioral questions and then a coding question afterwards. I was able to solve it and a couple days later, I opened my portal to see that I had an offer. I was really surprised and super, super grateful that I'd gotten the offer. I think I was in the middle of a League of Legends game and I just AFK to tell my mom and my best friend about it. So that was my process from start to finish. Now let's talk about three tips that'll help you be better at tech recruiting. My first tip is to expand your network as much as possible so you have a stronger chance at getting referrals to these companies. I know some of you might not like this tip because it doesn't have anything to do with your technical ability, but the reality is is that if you don't have an interview at these companies, you're not going to get an offer. And referrals are a great way to get your foot in the door to be seen by a recruiter and therefore have a higher chance of being interviewed. I didn't have any experience before I got my Amazon internship and I believe a big reason why I was able to get interviewed at Amazon was because, as I said before, my friend's brother gave me a referral. Networking and cold emailing people you don't know can be a bit foreign at first, and trying to get to know people just because they can get you a referral at a certain company is also pretty shallow, but I would say just keep this in the back of your mind, and if you ever need a reason to go out and try and meet new people, this could be just one small motivating factor for that. The second tip is to apply and prepare early. The recruiting timeline that I mentioned is really, really long. But think about it this way. There are people who apply in July when there are no spots filled and people like me who finished their applications in December when there were already thousands and thousands of people who'd gotten their offers. Because these applications are processed on a rolling basis, it makes a lot of sense to apply when there haven't been as many offers given out. Because if there aren't many spots left, the requirements to get an offer are gonna be a lot higher. So let's say I applied in January. If I'd gotten my interview process started just a month later, I probably wouldn't be working here because I'd be on the wait list. A common excuse I hear for not applying early is because people want more time to prepare for interviews. But my argument against that is just to prepare for your interviews earlier as well. Applications don't open until mid to late summer, so you still have that first half of the summer to prepare for your interviews. And besides, if you take more time to prepare, there may be less spots at the company that you're applying to and it'll be even harder to get a spot there. My final tip and the tip that I wish I took more seriously when I was applying is to tailor your resume to the application. You know when you're applying for internships and for jobs, there's a huge list of qualifications and requirements that we all skim over before applying. That right there is the company literally telling you what they want to see in an applicant. These companies also use automated resume screeners to filter out only the most competitive applicants. What keywords do you think they use to filter out out the best applicants? Well, we can't know for sure, but a good guess would be the keywords given in those long lists of requirements. And this seems like something so obvious, but how often have you heard of someone repeatedly tailoring their resume for every application that they send out? I know I didn't when I was applying, and that's probably why I received so few interviews when I was applying for internships. So there you go. That's my story of how I got my internship at Amazon, as well as three tips to help you get better at tech recruiting, and three tips that'll increase your chances at breaking into Amazon. Amazon or any other tech company for that matter. Once again, the three tips are to expand your network to try and get referrals to these big companies, apply and prepare early for these interviews, and tailor your resume to the position that you're applying for. Let me know in the comments down below if you thought this was helpful. And if you're interested in my specific interview process, I made a video about how I studied 300 code problems right here. Check it out.